Hassan district is situated in the southwestern part of Karnataka. The geography is mixed with Malnad or mountainous region to the west and southwest called Bislegar and the Maidan or plains region in the north, south and east. It is noted for its rich diversity of plant species apart from wetlands and floodplains serving the habitat requirement of several inhabitant communities. Most of the families of rural areas have the practice of maintaining their own home gardens which are the closest mimics of natural forests and support diverse wild species. As a part of their livelihood, they also indulge in rearing livestock. And here I begin my journey from Bangalore towards Hassan. Let's dive in a little deeper and try to have a glimpse of biodiversity of Harsin. I'll be covering areas, mainly the village of Renahalli. As a part of rearing livestock, the locals raise goats on a small farm. So seeing a trip or tribe of goats is common occurrence. They are mainly grown for production of milk, meat. We also see buffaloes, sheep, goats and cows. Coconut and areca nut are two major plantation crops that are grown over here. Coconut is referred to as Kalpaviksha as every part of it is used in one way or another. Mango is considered as the king of all fruits. It belongs to the family Anacardiaceae, botanically known as Mangifera indica. It is one of the most cultivated fruit in tropical and subtropical regions. In India, seven centers of mango diversity have been recognized and more than 1000 varieties are recorded. Teak is a tropical hardwood tree species in the family Lamiaceae. Tectona grandis is known for its incredible durability and water resistance. Hence, it's commonly used in making natural wood products. Locals of this region grow tomatoes along with papaya. These are the papaya transplants. And here is a glimpse of papaya orchard. Jamun or Nerile Hannu is an evergreen tropical tree which belongs to the family Myrtaceae. The fruits have subtle sweet, tart and sour flavor followed by an astringent aftertaste. I was also lucky enough to find some scarab beetles on the jamun tree. Revelia robusta, commonly called as silver oak, is a fast-growing evergreen tree. It's commonly used as shade tree and windbreaks. Neem tree is valued as a medicinal plant and also as a source of organic pesticide due to its antibacterial and fungicidal property. It's an evergreen tree that can reach a height of 15 to 20 meters. Mauritius hemp belongs to the family Asparagaceae. The fiber extracted from the leaf can be used to make twine, rope, cloth, mats, and sacks. Lichen is a symbiotic association between algae and fungi. They are excellent bioindicators of pollution. Jack tree is a common site. It belongs to the family Mauritius. Jackfruit is the largest tree-borne fruit in the world. We have the famous perennial herb, banana. Fun fact, banana is actually a berry. This is the banana plantation and these are the tissue culture plants of banana. Santalum album or Indian sandalwood is a small tropical tree. Its conservation status is vulnerable and sadly illegal smuggling is on the rise. Here's a brilliant and chunky swamp milkweed leaf beetle. These are the flower buds of unidentified lime plant and here is an open flower being pollinated. The locals told it's called Australian lime which is used only for pickling purposes. It's an introduced plant. Sparrows in India are endangered. They are losing their natural habitat due to rapid urbanization. Its presence has a direct bearing on our fragile ecology. We see a leopard, which are common sightings in the village, especially at nights. But what we are also witnessing 
is how habitat fragmentation proves to be a threat to biodiversity. If we look at home gardens, we can find crossandra, chili peppers, turmeric, guava tree, and also ramphal tree. On the roadsides, we can find tropical almond tree. Many locals also cultivate corn. One cannot miss the alluring flowers of Ipomia. It is the largest genus in the flowering plant family Convolvulaceae with over 600 species. There are beautiful colors of magenta and fuchsia pink, white and other hues. And also one cannot overlook this accidentally introduced noxious weed which we all know it as Parthenium. It's locally known as carrot grass or congress grass. It's literally everywhere. This is the Hemavati Canal. It is truly sad to see how polluted the water in the canal is. The river originates from the Western Ghats and finally joins Kaveri River. This is a small stream of Hemavati River. Dark evening brown butterflies can also be found here. There are also trees like fig and pongamia. Pongamia oil is a promising option for biofuel because of its environmental friendliness. This is a classical example of stream erosion. Streams erode and transport sediment. So, here we can see the exposed roots of nearby trees. Indian pennywort is an excellent medicinal plant commonly called as Vandalaga. Palash tree leaves are used for making eco-friendly plates. Edible mushrooms are found which are a rich source of protein. Custard apples are also grown over here. There is also pseudoranthemum flowers. There are so many varieties of hibiscus. Each variety differs in size, shape and color. Also there are roses and marigold. Talinum fruticosum or Nella bacillae is famously used for culinary purpose. Mimosa purica or touch me not plant has amazing medicinal properties. Famous as mosquito repellent and herbal teas is lemongrass. There is also the fragrant jasmine, hippili or pepili or long pepper is a very important medicinal plant. The locals call this plant nagnakudi. It is said it helps in treating neurological disorders effectively. Sugarcane is another crop that's widely cultivated here. Blue snakeweed is a fast grower that grows like a weed. It can outcompete native flora. Galangal is a rhizomatous spice which is closely related to turmeric and ginger but entirely different. Although blackjack normally behaves as an annual weed, it has several medicinal uses and mosquito repellent properties. And here is an insect that looks like great black wasp. We realize the importance of insects when it comes to pollination as they perform a crucial service that supports most of the world's plant diversity. Bees are identified as dominant crop pollinators. Rhinoceros beetle is a common pest of coconut. They feed on the developing fronds. What I've documented in this video accounts to only a tiny fraction of what's actually there. There's so much to be discovered still. Biodiversity is the greatest treasure we have. Its diminishment is to be prevented at all costs.